Hi everyone, my name is Marco with Board Game Revolution, and in today's sneak peek series, we're going to be talking about Sword Loser Games' newest Kickstarter, which is the expansion to the game that's on my right, Rise of the Necromancers. It's called Dawn and Demons, and in this, we're not going to actually be showing off Dawns and Demons because we don't have a copy, but we will be showing an overview of Rise of the Necromancers, a playthrough turn for one player, and then we're going to be talking about the highlights of the game and why you should consider backing the new expansion and what it comes with. Rise of the Necromancers is a 2-5 player area control, dice rolling, set collection game where players upgrade their necromancers, summon minions, and traverse the land, all to become the most dominant and be crowned king of the necromancers. A player's turn is comprised of five phases, playing cards, summoning, movement, action, and dominance. In the playing cards phase, players can play as many cards as they have the opportunity to play. Spells can be played for free, but have a cost to use, while necromancers, apprentices, and items require players to pay the cost on the lower left-hand corner. Next, players can summon any one minion as long as they have the resources to do so. Here, the player spends one lesser bones to summon a zombie into his army. In the movement phase, players must move into a different location. The base movement for necromancers is one. If you have any minions in your army, players can only move as fast as their slowest minion. As we see on the minions table, the only ones with increased speed is the Hell Knights and the Skeleton Dragon. Once players have moved to their new location, they will then do the action that is on that location. For library and workshop spots, players will draw three cards from the associated deck, choose one to put in their hand, and place the other two remaining cards on top of the deck. On resource locations, players will roll the associated dice and number of die that is printed on that location and collect their resources onto their tableau. On dungeons, players will draw one card from the top of the dungeon deck and will either compete in a combat or take on a quest. As long as a player succeeds in either instance, a player will put their dominance counter on that location. To show off combat, we're going to assume the player drew the snake's card. The player will use their necromancer and apprentice to combat the dungeon monster. If the player has any minions in their army, the minions will stay outside the dungeon. For combat, players will collect the number of die that is printed on the bottom of each card. The number shown on the die is the value that a player needs to get less than or equal to in order to do a successful hit. Here, the player successfully hits with one die. The snakes counter with one successful hit as well. The wound will go to the apprentice first, killing it, leaving the necromancer, defeating the snakes. In any dungeon instance, all you need is one successful hit as well as survive the combat. Collect any treasure printed on the card, and then put one dominance token on that dungeon. In the case the snakes were to do two hits, even though the necromancer did do a wound, they will still lose the dungeon event and be returned to the Valley of the Souls. Unowned city locations, as well as locations that are controlled by another player, will immediately spark a combat. Combat will flow in the same way it does in a dungeon, but this time your minions enter the fray. To win a city combat, you will have to do as much damage as there are towers printed on the city. If you successfully take out the city's defenses, you will collect the resources printed on the right, as well as put equal number of dominance counters as there are resources. If you already own the city, instead of doing combat, you will collect taxes and collect resources from every city you own. Last, players will check to see if there's any dominance counters that will go onto their player board. For every unique colored spell, or item that you played this turn, you will put one dominance counter onto your player board, up to a max of three for each. Play will continue until the first player places all 13 dominance counters on the game board as well as player board. So why should you back Rise of the Necromancers, Dawn and Demons? So first off, talking about the base game. This is a great entry level area control style game. So if those who have ever considered playing Tyrants of the Underdark or other games similar in that mechanic, I would really suggest considering looking at Rise of the Necromancers first. This is a great way to get you into the mechanic or your friends into the area control theme and mechanic. Because in this game, it's not as complex and you don't have to worry about too many sub mechanics that will really bog down play or confuse newer players. Number two, the customization and replayability of this game. 
So when you start the game, you have three necromancers to choose from to be your ultimate necromancer. And then in every game after that, you're going to get a different set. And so you're going to learn different ways to play this game. And so every game is going to be different and you can learn different styles, different combinations. And it doesn't suffer from those such as season where if you're playing against an experienced player, a novice player is going to feel out of place or they're just going to want to quit. Because again, this is a gateway game and it works very well in feeling like you're customized your character or your necromancer and their minions into making the ultimate domination that you want. Number three, talking about the expansion, you now have demons. So before you were summoning minions, which were just little cardboard pieces, such as uh, the one we have right here, you know, which is, you know, nice and colorful, it's cool, but the new demons actually give you miniatures. And these miniatures can also move on its own, which is what minions couldn't do in the base game. So with these new demons or minions, you can now actually have separate little warring parties to actually expand your domination across the land. And number four, there's a co-op mode. That's right, Rise of the Necromancers has upgraded from just competitive play to now competitive or co-op mode. So with this new Dawn section, you're now fighting against light to see who is going to rule the land, either the Necromancers or the Soldiers of Light. And you're gonna be playing against what is called the Archbishop. And you're gonna have a timer that ticks off every round till when the archbishop spawns and that is what dictates how the winning condition is going to affect the gameplay if you uh, are able to actually get your counters down onto the board uh, with uh, all your friends all down on the table you win if the archbishop comes out that is no longer a valid winning condition and now you actually have to beat the archbishop before the timer ticks backwards so it's a really interesting really thematic and also very tense type of gameplay because you're fighting against the clock. Well everyone, if you like what you see here, please make sure to check out Rise of the Necromancers Dawn and Demons on Kickstarter starting August 13th. And if you like our content, please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel on Facebook as well as YouTube. You guys have a great day.